Hello, Makati! Hello, world! This is Attorney Angel, and I'm your legal angel. Hi, my fellow angels! I hope that you are all staying safe and staying well. So, medyo matagal na po ang last vlog natin. And um, we had um, consecutive vlogs tungkol sa learning. And I hope I can also, again, um, feature living and loving. But uh, before I go again to learning, uh, papakilala ko lang po sa inyo. Si Kichi Pop, our legal doggy number two. Because yung legal doggy number one po natin, si MJ natutulog. Okay, ito little sister po siya. Okay, si Kichi. K-I-C-H-I. Yes. Very sweet dog. Ayan. And, um, 695 na tayo. Wow, yay! So, I'm so happy po. We're on the way to our uh, 700 subscribers. Please like, subscribe, share, and follow. And thank you very much po sa inyong lahat. And uh, next week, it will be my birthday. So, uh, mamimigay po tayo ng care kit. So, actually, meron na po tayong dalawa na pagbibigyan ng care kit. Nung nagkaroon po kami na activity sa UMAX School of Law, meron pong dalawang sadyante na nagkaroon ng, nanalo ng care kit. Uh, courtesy of yours truly. So, hopefully then, um, on my birthday, I'll be able to give um, three more care kits. Okay? So, uh, stay tuned po kung paano and um, maybe you can also message me if you need a uh, um, more details. Okay, so thank you very much and uh, please watch this. I would like to share with you my PowerPoint presentation which I shared with my statutory construction class and this uh, includes the fundamentals on statutory construction including basic concepts and rules. Let's start. This is just a brief discussion that would cover the definition of some essential terms, um, answering the question as to the necessity and purpose of construction, and um, what is the subject matter of construction, is there any limitation to the power to construe, and basic rules. So let's uh, first discuss some essential terms. Of course, we have to discuss the definition of statutes because our subject is statutory construction. So when you say statutes, these are the written enactment of the legislative making body. Okay? In other words, these are the laws okay? um, enacted by the legislature. Of course, we have the word construction, but uh, we will include it here as statutory construction. Okay, so... In the case of Caltex versus Palomar, the Supreme Court cited Black's interpretation of laws. And so, it said that, Verily, construction is the art or process of discovering and expounding the meaning and intention of the authors of the law with respect to its application to a given case, where that intention is rendered doubtful amongst others by reason of the fact that the given case is not explicitly provided for in the law. There are several key words to zoom into with regard to the definition of construction. Of course, you know that it is an art or process. Okay? And the words discovering, expounding, the words meaning and intention, of course, authors of the law, and application to a given case. And of course, the word doubtful. All right. So you will appreciate this more when you already take um, the, the subject of statutory construction and uh, when you discuss the cases which are an application of statutory construction. All right. And the word interpretation or the term interpretation, which um, Dr. Francis Lieber, author of the Lieber Code, defines as the art of finding out the true sense of any form of words. That is, the sense which their author intended to convey and of enabling others to derive from the same idea which the author intended to convey. So there are also keywords in this long definition. 
just like construction, it is an art. Okay, and then, of course, the word finding out, and then the true sense of any form of words, focus on the words. And, um, of course, the word author, then intended to convey. These are some of the keywords you have to consider. Now, the words interpretation and construction are often used interchangeably. If you look at them, they have the same purpose or objective. And that purpose or objective is to assert it and give effect to the legislative intent. But if you look at it, um, if you look at these words closely, strictly speaking, there is a distinction. And that distinction lies with respect to the kind of um, aids used, either intrinsic or extrinsic aids. Now, these are the five questions that we have to answer. What is the purpose of interpretation and construction? Two, when is there a need to construe? Three, when it is not necessary to construe? When is it not necessary to construe? Four, what is the subject matter of construction? And five, who has the power and duty to construe? So let's answer them briefly one by one. For the purpose, we have mentioned that it is to ascertain and give effect to the legislative intent or the framers or authors of the law. As for the necessity, consider these two factors. There is a necessity to construe when, first, the language of the statute is ambiguous when taken in relation to a set of facts. So, zoom into the word ambiguous, meaning to say vagueness, doubleness of meaning, or doubtfulness of meaning, in which it causes confusion. So, it leads us to number two. When reasonable minds disagree as to the meaning of the language used in the statute. So, because of the ambiguity and the confusion, the doubtfulness of meaning, the doubleness of meaning, of meaning and the vagueness created by the language of the statute, Reasonable minds disagree as to its meaning. Okay. The third question as to when is it not necessary to construe? It is not necessary to construe when the law speaks in clear and categorical language. Because it is clear and it is categorical and there is no room for any vagueness or ambiguity. As to the subject matter of construction, of course, as a whole, the subject matter are our laws. Okay? Um, statutes, these are um, the written enactments of the legislature. But also in statutory construction or construction, there is also constitutional construction. There are also other kinds of laws which come into the realm of statutory construction, such as ordinances, presidential decrees, executive orders, and other kinds or classifications of laws as well. As to the power and duty, of course, we know that from the principle of separation of powers, it is the judiciary or the judicial branch of government which has the power and the duty to interpret the law. And um, as to limitation, um, there is a limitation on the power of the judiciary or the judicial branch of government. So first, there must be an actual case or controversy, and there must be ambiguity in the law involved in the case or controversy before they can interpret or construe the law in a given case or in its application to a given case. And of course, judicial legislation is prohibited. The primordial duty of the judiciary is to interpret the law as it is. And only when there is ambiguity that um, they apply some aids such as the intrinsic and the extrinsic aids. But they cannot modify, they cannot rewrite, they cannot adjust the law because it will tantamount to judicial legislation and that is not allowed, that is prohibited. And we have now come to some of the basic rules. So, three-tiered. First of all, if the language is clear and categorical, apply the law. But, second tier, if the language is ambiguous, first is interpret the law. By interpreting the law, you use intrinsic aids. And the third tier, when intent cannot be ascertained by the use of intrinsic aids, 
used extrinsic aids, and that is when you construe, or some um, authors, they say construct. Okay, so apply, interpret, and construe the law. Um, when you say intrinsic aids, these are aids found within the law itself, within the language of the law. So this is in interpretation. When, strictly speaking, you say construction, you use extrinsic aids, and these are found outside the language of the law. The example of intrinsic aids, the words used, the punctuation marks, etc. Extrinsic aids, those that are found outside of the language of the law, the deliberations, like for example, in the Cons Constitutional Commission, the transcript of stenographic notes in judicial proceedings, etc. And um, verbal edges, the plain meaning rule, um, which is according to the letter of the law, and rational edges, meaning to say the reason for the law or reason of the law, which goes into the spirit of the law. And another reminder is that the statutes must be construed as a whole and not merely of a particular provision. Likewise, in constitutional construction, we look at um, the constitution as a whole and not merely of separate provisions of the constitution. Okay, so it is the end of our discussion. I hope you learned something from this uh, brief discussion on the statutory construction fundamentals, um, including basic concepts and rules. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you very much for listening and for watching. By the way, thank you very much sa lahat ng bumate ng Happy Teacher's Day. Happy Teacher's Day din po sa co-teachers ko. To all the teachers in the world, thank you very much. And also for the students who sent gifts and um, greeted all the teachers. And uh, syempre, kasama na rin ako doon. Thank you very much. And um, please be kind, be generous, be a blessing to others, and always remember to glorify God with a grateful heart. This is Attorney Angel, and I'm your legal angel. Sarangye!